driving around getting corn samples. So far we've sampled the corn at home. Forgot to turn the camera on. Across the road was hand sampling 24, 25%. Up back behind the shop where she got some was 22 to 23. We just went over to Scotty's 80 acres. A lot of eardrop over there, so I'm thinking that's drier. Plus it's a two or three days shorter corn planted you know four days later than what was at home maybe without looking at my book I'm not sure so we're going to sample that on the way back we're going to stop at the big field across from the uh, test plot there the one I call the boot of Italy grab some there and we're going to stop one other place and grab some see what we've got action action <laughs> all right throwing my cobs in here my kernels in here corn so we break it in half and I always like to go oh that one bit pretty hard then I become the human combine Whee. we are hand shelling some corn Check the moisture. So far, we checked across the road. That was 24, 25. We checked up back. That was 22, 23. This is the stuff from Scotty's. So you get the gist of this part. She can turn it off, and then we'll show you the testing part. When I get inside, I got too abusive with that. I broke the cob in half. Alright, I got my six ear shell. Shaking it up. <clears throat> Testing time. For this one to tell me to fill the hopper. And it says four. Now I wait. Remove hopper and brush. It levels it off. And it says measuring, keep stable, or just don't smack it around. Whoa, that stuff's wet, 27%. So, now what I do is I dump it back in that thing and put it on here. I need 250 grams. I don't know if you can read that. Putting it in until it gets to, whoops, got a little crazy. And sometimes you're never perfect on 250. Mm, you remind me of the guy at the deli when I asked for a pound. 249.9, that's about as Hand. good as you're going to get. Pour it in that. Put it in there. Push test. Wait for it to tell me to dump it. Load. test and then we wait and see what that one says and that actually surprised me because I thought that corn felt fairly dry no oh, 27.4 my bites dry Tui. all right so dump that do another one here So as you can see, the one was 27, the other one was 27.4, so they're close. It's hard to find testers that are perfect with each other. Remove hopper. Get rid of a little bit I couldn't get in. Brush. with the test weight this year I thought it would be better 
and it was a dry year. That one's 25.5, that's a little drier. Let's see what this one says now. I'll take a kernel out, it'll go below 250. Yep, 249.9. Close as we're gonna get. That one said 25.5, so, yep, they're pretty close. So you get the gist of testing corn. We don't need to show you any more of this. All right, last few things of being ready. I just greased that PTO shaft on the wet pen auger. Whee. Greasing the dryer now. I greased the bearing on the bottom of the of well that's the actual wet bin auger that goes from the wet bin to the dryer i call that the wet bin auger because it's the auger that fills the wet bin but you know what i'm talking about so i just greased the bearings underneath here for the uh inside uh conveyor that takes the corn back I just climbed in here and I greased that big shaft on this side of the fan and then I just climbed across through the little cubby hole in there and did the one that's in here on this side of the fan rather than take this shield off. Yeah, because as you can tell, you know, that's like up to here on me. So it's not easy for my old fat ass to get in and out of there. So it's just as easy to crawl through the space here to get over there. So I gotta sweep this cement up too. Freaking birds, bird shit from the summer. I gotta grease the lag, I gotta grease the grease fitting on this side of the drag conveyor. The one on this side of the drag conveyor. Damn birds and bird shit. That's the drag conveyor. This doesn't have uh, metering rolls and an auger in the bottom it's got the drag conveyor system so <clears throat> and then i gotta go in the bins and do the grease fittings in there under the floor that sucks i hate that job oh yeah and i have to go up there and get the top auger on both ends and get the pulley on top of the wet bin auger up there and then we will officially be ready and i'm still waiting to hear back from the dealership Today's Monday as to whether or not they can come Thursday. So I figure if it dries another point, point and a half or so, that's a good thing. And I do not like to not take advantage of this good weather the beginning part of April. Some are gonna argue with me, and that's fine. As you know, I don't give a shit. Argue with me. But I would rather dry 24, 25, 26% corn when it's 60 degrees out or, or better because these dryers use outside air you know that's what these louvers are for taking in air with the big fan in there you're going to burn just as much propane as you are waiting for it to get to 20 21 maybe 22 when it's 30 degrees outside because you're going to burn more propane the colder the outside air is so that's what I've always experienced. Those that want to argue, go ahead. But I will dry corn that's 3 to 4% wetter in the field on a 60, 65 degree day over 3 to 4 points drier on a 30 degree day any day of the week. So Plus it's nicer to work in that weather. All right, I greased the bearing in there. So I got to take the floor panel off in there. No, I'm not bringing you in to grease it. But as you can see, that's the shit that I've blown up here with the leaf blower because it's just stuff that sticks on the walls. 
and then finally falls off and I'm echoing like hell. So I got the gator and the shovel to shovel it in the back and of course then I gotta go around and do it to the other ones too. I also went and grabbed an N95 mask because that was kind of dusty. And I'm quite sure later I'll be sneezing my ass off with my allergies. So, yes, masks are actually made for something. Yeah, they do protect you from certain things. There it is. I will put it on when I go to the back bins. So, other than that, I like to breathe fresh air. So, yeah, you get the point. Go ahead, haters. I don't care but so like I said I gotta take that floor up there's two grease fittings in there same with all the bins are the same so and I've showed it before and it's dark in there so and it's a bitch to try and hold the grease gun and a flashlight to show you two grease fittings so I'm just gonna go do it all right so this one's done so the whole principle of these floors as you can hopefully see I'm not climbing back in they got slats in them where the air blows up through to help cool the corn, help dry the corn. Now these two outer sumps are open right now, which I'm about ready to take care of that issue. Oh, that was loud. Yeah, that sounds like, sounds like my back in the morning. Bunch of that sounds really good. Alright. Now you can tell they're covered. So now I take this little bolt out right here. I'm doing the nut on the other side. Well, I got a big one to get the bolt out there. So now when I go to hang on, I'm trying to get the nut on the bolt. I shouldn't do this while I'm talking to you. I'm not gonna. So now when I open this up, the only thing that's gonna open up, see I'm doing the same thing, I'm opening it back up where it was closed. Those are staying shut and the only one that's opening is the center one. You feed your bin down until it gets to where it doesn't run anymore. And then you have to open these two up, let it feed down so this sweep arm gets uncovered. And then you turn this on and it goes around the bin to help finish cleaning so you farmers all know that and yes this is moving quite nicely without making that screeching noise the main reason why it's screeching is because this is pipe and it just you know is sliding against that hole there yeah i could probably spray some some uh free all in there or something and maybe i will but okay so bin number one is done and that's the shit that I blew up that was on the floor. Maybe one and a half shovels full. You don't want to leave that in there because that affects the airflow blowing up through. And you just don't want to leave it in there anyhow because it's just shitty stuff. Just basically stuff that sticks to the inside of the walls. You know, it doesn't come down. I think, I don't know, I think we emptied this bin in June. So basically the summer heat and whatnot made it, you know, finally fall off the walls. But yeah, I'm gonna go do the other two bins and you don't need to see it because it's the same as what this one was. All right, charging that battery. It's like, I had to take my sweatshirt off. It's like borderline, I'm chilly a little bit because I'm sweating, but it was like warm out here with the sweatshirt on. I don't know, it's that time of year. Got my Are You Getting It Yet t-shirt on. Yep. Hopefully more people do. But, so now, officially, we are ready. Other than them coming out and getting the combine set up. So, dryer, bins, wet bin, everything officially ready. I gotta grab that other grease gun. So, just so you all can kind of get an idea of the setup here, I will, you know, explain things as we go, as we, as we uh, start harvest, hopefully in about three days. Making sure I shut everything off in there as far as the testers go. So, oh yeah, oh, I do have one more thing to do. Gotta go get the shovel. Yeah, coons. 
Gotta love coons, rotten bastards. That was the coon shit that I kicked off the top of the dryer. Yeah, they're a fun animal. Mm-hmm. All right, so hopefully the next one after this one will actually be the new New Holland in the fields working. So we'll see.